Joining in New York-based attorney Nicole Brunecki tonight. Um, Nicole, I wanted to talk to you because it seems like this New York courtroom and judge may be a little bit different than the, you know, genteel atmosphere of federal courtrooms, which Trump has been in more recently. So I really wanted to understand it because his political pitch seems to be, I'm legally persecuted by this man. And we know the judge is strict. Yes, Trump cannot mumble in court. He has to be present every day, be on time. But is this judge unusually strict for a New York judge? Um, I find this question regarding the comparison of state and federal court very amusing uh, because actually the difference is is uh, is big. Um, but coming back to your question about the judge, I don't think that the judge is uh, unnecessarily strict at all. Actually, the judge is known for um, making sure that his courtroom decorum is enforced, that his rules are enforced. Um, he's. I don't think that he's doing anything special in this case. Um, this case is um, a case of very high publicity, uh, so he needs to probably um, enter some additional measurements in order to make sure that there is a order in the courtroom. Um, but there is definitely a difference between how it goes in federal court and state court, but it does not pertain to the judge, in my opinion. Yeah, tell me why that's amusing. Uh, because as you... Um, as it's been noted in the media uh, so far, uh, federal courts are um, just just to begin with with the basic matter that they look better inside. Uh, it's it's just a completely different look. Um, state courts uh, operating on state budget are underfunded. They're slower. They're not as um, um, good looking inside. And there is a contrast. But we need to remember that justice is served in both. It's just one is slower than the other and one looks worse than the other, but it's all about the same thing. Um, he may be pointing out to differences like that, but I don't think it goes uh, to the merits of the case I at see. all. I see. The book by its cover. Got that. So um, back to the, exactly. you know, the conduct of the judge. Um, when he decides something like the defense he doesn't think can be trusted with, let's say, the first three witnesses on the witness list, which is customary to provide, is that normal for a judge to withhold? Um, the judge has discretion as to how to run a trial. So if he, in that particular situation, had some doubts, then he, he needed to voice them. But um, I really don't think that he is biased. I actually think he has an incredibly difficult task of, of running this trial of high publicity. Um, and he is known to do exactly the same in regular types of cases as well. So. Um, I, I don't think there's anything uh, out of order so far. Definitely, he's trying to make sure that all the all the issues that have to be decided prior to the trial are decided as soon as possible, so there's no further delays. Um, Trump has been attempting to delay the trial. Uh, the judge is trying to prevent that. J jury selection itself has been really drawn out. Um, it's already been a week. I know that they impanel the jury today. They're hoping to uh, start opening arguments by Monday, but uh, there's still the process of selecting alternates. So he just way, really needs to keep. Yeah. Do you think the judge has been good about screening out people with potential biases? Because the defense says, you know, we have some liberals trying to sneak their way onto the court. To, you know, they want to be on this jury and they've tried to hide things, you know, their criminal past or their social media posts and things like that. Do you think the judge has done a good job with that? Um, I, I do think that um, we, we need to remember that the jury selection process is mostly controlled by the attorneys. So the judge only gets involved in it when there's a dispute as to whether a certain juror can be or cannot be on the jury. Um, we have strikes that we can exercise, they exercise the strikes, and then beyond the strikes that you exercise, the judge makes the decisions. Um, this is an incredibly difficult case to do jury selection because everyone has heard about the defendant and everyone has some views about the defendant. So I think that the degree of control that he's exercised is proportionate to the case that he's handling, but I don't think there's been anything um, out of proportion in this particular case. If this was in any other case, we could have that discussion, but here is, uh, he's really facing a difficult task. And I, and I, and I and hope that everyone understands that. It seems the judge is also very familiar with the defendant in this case and has, uh, you know, made that known as well. Of He, he kind of knows um, he, how he's conducted himself. He, has, uh, he, so. yeah. he dealt with cases in the past that, that pertain to his associates, but um, this is this case 
you, he needs to be impartial in this specific case. And I think that so far there has not been any abuse of his uh, judiciary power so far. All right. Nicole Bernacki, attorney at law in New York. Uh, we really wanted to understand what's going on in that room. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you very much as well. Bye-bye.